That's okay, don't worry about it. Hello and welcome to the Mount Any Health 2020 virtual tour. We'll be taking you behind the scenes at some of the most high-tech areas across the health system. Today we're here with Virol Patel, MD. He's joining us from one of two linear accelerator vaults located at Mount Nindy Medical Center. Welcome Dr. Patel. Let's start by introducing you. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do here at Mount Nindy Health. Yeah, thanks for having me and thanks for everyone for joining. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove my mask just so you guys can hear me better. Uh, you know, in, the, uh, in the, the, the department right here right now, we're practicing social and safe distancing at this point right now. So it's okay for me to take off my mask, but when, you, when people and patients come see us in person, we're all masked, uh, we're all practicing social distancing measures as well too, and following all the CDC guidelines. So we wanna make sure that everyone understands we, we very strictly adhere to the guidelines to keep everyone safe in the hospital system as well. Okay. Uh, my name is Vero Patel, I'm one of uh, two radiation oncologists in our department here. My partner is Dr. Jerome Durdell, and, and our PA is Angelica Klein, and the three of us make up the radiation oncology team here with the rest of our staff, which includes the therapists, nurses, uh, and the uh, medical dosimetry and physics team as well too. Very good, thank you. Uh, can you tell us about what services are provided in the space we're visiting today? Sure, yeah, so right behind me here is our uh, True Beam Linear Accelerator. It's the uh, Cadillac of uh, Linear Accelerators. This is uh, our newest machine that we have here too, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of tour of that as well. Uh, so, you know, this is a radiation therapy treatment machine. And you know, and I can go into a little bit more detail if you want to as well too. Okay, very good. Um, first, Dr. Patel, can you tell us exactly how does radiation therapy work for patients? Sure, yeah, so when a patient comes to our department, uh, we're gonna meet everybody in person, we're going to evaluate their, their case and, and make sure that radiation therapy is actually appropriate for them. So after we've decided that radiation therapy is appropriate, uh, we have a room right next door to us here, we have our own personal CT scanner patient will go through a CT scan. Uh, that CT scan will give us a data set of the area that we want to treat. And then I use that information with our physics team to come up with a very highly sophisticated radiation therapy plan. After that's done and all the planning is ready to go, we bring the patients uh, right here to the, the machine. Uh, we have our therapists who are typically in the room and they're the ones who are gonna work with you to get you comfortable and get you set up on the table as well too. Uh, after that's done, uh, we start radiation therapy, you know, on a daily basis. So typically, just to give a little bit of a background, we're talking about uh, treatment sessions that last about 10, 15 minutes a day uh, over the course of every day of the week, over five days. And those sessions will typically last somewhere between four to six weeks for radiation therapy. Um, you know, the way it works is the radiation therapy is delivered from the head of the machine. Uh, you know, and I can kind of show you a little bit how things work as well, too. So I'm going to step over here just to give us a little bit more of a better position. Uh, our patients will lie on the table, their head will be here. Um, so we have a really fancy couch here as well too. This couch actually not only can move in different directions, so my therapists are the ones who actually usually operate this machine, so they're better at it than I am, but, but typically we can do little shifts like this, and we can actually move the table around back and forth as well too as needed as well. Uh, and then this table is actually called the perfect pitch couch actually as well. So we can actually make even little shifts on the table. They're too hard to see, but the table can actually go and pitch, yaw, and roll as well. So that's really a, a, a great feature for us when we're doing more stereotactic treatments as well too. Um, and then just in general, you know, the head of the machine, the radiation's coming out right from here. And so we can actually, and we typically do, the gantry will rotate back and forth like this. It can go all the way around the patient. Uh, on other side as well too. So we can continuously deliver radiation therapy as the gantry is moving back and forth as well. Um, you know, and then another really cool feature about these linear accelerators, and we have another one in another room as well too, is we have image guidance on board as well too. So we have these arms right here, and this one on the bottom, so we can get highly detailed scans for our patients every day while they're on treatment when it's necessary. So we get some really nice precision, so you can get a sense of it as well too. We can bring out the arms of the machine like this, which is really nice. So even during treatment and everything like that too, we can bring things in back and forth. So and even the head of the actual machine as well too, this can actually rotate 360 degrees as well too. So we really have some great technology here. And just one other thing to point out too, which is kind of new since we've had this machine. Uh, it's hard to see here, but we have two optical cameras that are on the top here called the Catalyst Unit basically that provides optical service monitoring for our patients. So when necessary, we can monitor patients on a daily basis, real time, 
which is really nice. So if someone makes a motion on a table, we actually can detect that. So when we're doing stereotactic treatments, that's, that's really great as well, too. Okay, great. Thank you for all of that. That oh, was sure. very helpful. Um, Dr. Patel, during radiation therapy, do patients hear or feel anything as they're getting the radiation treatments? Yeah, the great thing about radiation therapy is that it's a um, generally a painless treatment for the most part. So when patients come in, I usually tell them that the way you feel before you come in the room is the way you're going to feel after you, get, you exit the room as well, too. Uh, I mean, there are definitely some side effects with radiation therapy depending on the site that we treat. But typically speaking, you know, when you come in the room and leave the room, you're going to feel the exact same way. These are invisible x-rays. You can't see them or feel them. So it's generally a painless treatment in that sense. No different than if you got a CAT scan done or an x-ray or anything like that as well, too. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Um, and the technology you showed here is very impressive. I'm wondering, though, if there are any wellness tips that you'd like to share with our viewers while we have you here today. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that when it comes to cancer specifically, you know, we still kind of follow some of the same basic principles that primary care may recommend as well, too. We recommend healthy diet, exercise, uh, you know, no smoking cessation, limiting alcohol intake to social uh, levels as well, too, and just practicing regular healthy diet. And then especially, obviously, in the time that we live in right now, too, we're just practicing you know, social distancing and safe practices like that as well, too, and the things that are going to typically good, be good for anyone in the community as well. So it's pretty similar to what we recommend for most people. That's great. It's a good reminder that there are some risk factors for cancer that patients cannot control, like genetics, but there are some things that they can take care of. Um, Nell's probably also a good time to remind everybody to put that sunscreen on. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Yeah, and that, that also reminds us too that, you know, going to a primary care doctor, following up with screening guidelines, when they, whether it's for mammograms or mm -hmm. it's for PSA or if it's colonoscopies as well too, there are screening measures out there. Even for lung cancer screening, we have a lung cancer screening program here as well too. You know, so we have screening programs available here in our medical system. So it's just important that you remind you, you know, you, you take the time out to so your primary care doctor. You know, depending on your age, there may not be anything available or necessary at this point. But as we get older and past certain age marks like 40 and 50 years old, those things are a part of the discussion and are important to make sure we take care of. Great. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the resources that we have here at Mount Indy Health to help people with those risk factors such as smoking and others. Um, finally, um, we did receive some questions from viewers before we wrap up with you today sure. regarding radiation therapy that I'm hoping you can help us with. The first question is, is this, with COVID-19, should I delay my radiation therapy at this time? That's a great question, you know, and one that we really had to juggle with in the beginning and, and it was kind of really honestly a moving target, but, but the simple answer is that, you know, we want to see you in person, you know, work through telemedicine, and we want to discuss what makes the most sense for you. Generally speaking, you know, we're going to treat you no different than any other scenario, uh, you know, and we want to make sure that we're doing what's best for your clinical care. So uh, I think that, you know, the simple answer that I would give to patients in general recommendation is make sure you at least see your oncology providers, have those conversations, and then make informed decisions about what makes sense based on what they discuss with you as well, too. Okay, that's great. Thank you. The next question is similar. Uh, this person is asking, is it safe for me to come to the hospital for treatment at this time? So as we said in the beginning, we are in the Mount Indy Medical Center. Maybe you can talk to us about some um, cautions that we're taking around COVID-19 to ensure patient safety. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, you know, we really are obviously practicing, you know, CDC guidelines here in the Mount Indy Medical System in general. So there's social distancing, you know, uh, where everyone's required to wear masks as well too. We're doing temperature checks at all sites of entry for patients and the employees actually fall underneath the same kind of regulations as well too. So, you know, uh, there's really safe practices here and I actually tell most of my patients you're probably safer here than you are in a lot of other places out there because everyone here is looking out for the best interest of the patients and, and the staff as well too. So I think that's really important. You know, and what I tell patients in general is that I believe it's definitely a safe place to still get treatment because we're, we're doing all these things on a regular basis so our, our goals here are to obviously take care of anybody regardless of their situation whether they're COVID-19 positive or not and, and make sure that we're taking care of everyone safely and, and protecting the people who don't have it and making sure we take care of those who may potentially have it at one Okay um, that's great thank you you mentioned being COVID positive and we did have a question from someone that says I'm undergoing treatment if I tested positive for COVID-19 for the safety of others, should I cancel my treatment? Should I continue with my treatments? 
And I think this person is concerned about the possibility of passing COVID-19 along to other patients who are healthy. Sure. What are your thoughts, Dr. Patel? Yeah, the first thing I say, and generally what our recommendation is in the Mount Medical System is to call. Call ahead, call to our office, call to us, let us know that that was going on. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, you know, I want to assure patients that if a scenario like that comes up, our goal is to take care of them for their oncology care. So, you know, that doesn't usually necessarily mean there has to be delays in therapies or anything. Sometimes it does mean maybe things get scheduled, uh, the schedule gets flipped around a little bit, you know, what time someone might get treated or something like that. But but generally speaking, you know, it's, it, it's, it, it's still gonna be safe to treat that patient and still gonna be safe to treat other patients who don't have COVID-19 because we have already basically a program set in place to accommodate for these types of things as well too, which is generally across the entire medical system as well so you know from that perspective I want to assure patients that you know whether what their situation is you know we're going to take care of them regardless but yeah you know that's a great thing that if, if it does happen to someone you know that the one thing we want to uh, encourage them is to call us right away and let us know that and then we're going to kind of work on the strategy plan to get them back here and get them treated safely and then also still safely you know protect our other staff and patients as well too. Great that's great to hear Dr. Patel that there's a plan for those patients and a plan for protecting everyone at this time Absolutely. with regards to COVID-19. Uh, we have two more questions here regarding radiation therapy. Um, the first question is, how can I best take care of myself or a loved one undergoing radiation therapy? Are there any tips that you would recommend? Yeah, I think really what's important is kind of, you know, just like going through anything else in life that might feel, excuse me, difficult or challenging is to really kind of make sure we're there for them mentally and physically, you know? So, I mean, I think from a general perspective, I think everyone's, Everyone's situations are different. Sometimes it's actually a physical thing, getting back and forth for treatment. Sometimes it's more mental or it has to do more with anxiety or stress and, and getting that kind of support as well too. So I, I don't know that there's a one size fits all strategy, but I think it's really most important is, is listening. You know, I think listening to what's going and paying attention to what's going on. Sometimes patients aren't gonna tell you everything. They're not gonna say necessarily they're feeling down their actions might describe that to us there you know the change in patterns might be a little bit different so so it really is important really to kind of pay attention to the things that sometimes we don't necessarily say out loud to other people mm -hmm. and, and just kind of try to you know know who our family or friends are that are going through these things as well too and, and our staff does the same thing here as well too uh, you know my therapists are excellent here you know if they feel like someone something's changing for somebody they, they really will come and tell us and say hey look can you talk to this patient, make sure everything's going well, you know, and we really do get those situations and, and our staff is well equipped to handle that anytime as well. So. That's great, thank you, great advice. And then another question, um, this question states that there are many types of radiation therapy that I've read about, external beam, image guided, stereotactic, neutron beam, proton beam, what type exactly does Mount Any Health use? Yeah, that's a great question. So we, we do offer multiple modalities of radiation therapy. As this machine behind us, this can deliver both photon radiation therapy and electron radiation therapy. So generally, the majority of the people in the country who are getting radiation therapy are getting photon or electron radiation therapy. There are more advanced techniques out there, like proton therapy, but that's typically in metropolitan areas and not really for what's needed for most patients out there. Uh, generally, you know, with the technology that we have here, we can provide, you know, the care for almost anybody out there that's what, for whatever is needed as well too. Uh, additionally, you know, we can't show every room today, hopefully we will in the future, but we do have a high dose rate afterloader here, so we do some really uh, advanced internal radiation therapy procedures as well too for different gynecologic cancers and even esophageal lung cancers as well too. So we, we do do that, and just one other thing that we actually do here about it is we do unsealed source radiation therapy as well too, so we do things to treat patients with metastatic prostate cancer with injecting radioactive treatments as well too. So there are things that we do that aren't necessarily in the normal frame of radiation therapy that we still provide here because we really want to make this a place that cancer patients can come for all of their care no matter what type of cancer they have. Oh, that's great. Great to know that patients don't have to travel far to receive the care that they need. That's really excellent. Um, and then one final question um, for you, Dr. Patel, would be, is there any special um, event that your patients go through when they finish their radiation therapy? I hear that you have a tradition that started since you came on board. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. No, it's definitely a special thing. You know, I think uh, every patient's uh, desires at the end of their treatment, how they feel and stuff is going to be different. But, but we have this special bell out by our front entrance there. And, and we, and we 
know, no matter who's available or not with our current circumstances, you know, we want to give every patient the opportunity if they want to celebrate. And our staff member, socially distanced, wants to be there to at least put a participate that as well too. So we have a really nice thing where if a patient's interested in doing that, they can ring the bell. And a lot of our staff are there to kind of honestly cheer them on and clap for them and just be happy for them as well too. So yeah, it's a really nice thing. I think it's a really nice closure for a lot of patients that we have. And just one more little thing we try to do just to kind of make them feel like, you know, their, their treatment was completed. So. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patel, sure, for being absolutely. here today and answering all our questions. That's about all the time we have. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Please be sure to follow our Facebook page for our next virtual tour stop. And for more information about the services we visited today, please visit mountainatney.org.